In this video, I'm going to show you a quick introduction to M calibration, how you can read in the experimental data, select the material model, and calibrate it very quickly using the M calibration software. So let's start. Here's some experimental data file that I, files that I have. And if I open them with a text editor, you'll see that there are three columns. These happen to be time, engineering strain, and engineering stress in both of these files. And this is the data that I want to use to calibrate the material model. So to read this data into M calibration, you can do that in three different ways, basically. You can just select them in your uh, Explorer window, copy it to the clipboard, and then just open M calibration, a blank new window, and then just paste it in like this. This reads in the experimental data into the software here under the experimental data tab. Another way to do it, which is what I typically do, is to uh, open M calibration. And I go into the tab, the different tabs here, into edit experimental data. Of course, when I read in experimental data, often I need to manipulate the data to make it suitable for material model calibration. And that's what we do under this tab here, under edit data. So I would read in this data by lo click load. I take one file at a time. There are three columns now here, and they're plotted to the right. And we need to tell M calibration what these columns are. So we can do column one is time, column two is engineering strain, and column three is in engineering stress. And then we can plot to the right here in the engineering stress strain data to see if it looks OK. It's a little noisy here. Perhaps one thing we'll do for our demonstration here is to resample the data. There is, uh, seems to be less data points down here and more over here. I want to resample them so they're more evenly spaced. I can do that by clicking on number of rows and basically resample them here. Now they're more evenly spread out over the load here. So that's uh, one way to do it. We can remove some of the noise here. And there's a lot of very powerful ways to clean up experimental data here. But this is all I will show in this introduction. Once we have uh, manipulated the data or we're satisfied with it, we're going to create a load case from this table of data. So let's click on Create Load Case. This brings us over to this load case dialog box. Here, let's double check the stress is engineering stress strain. The loading mode is uniaxial. You need to specify, of course, what kind of data it is. The time stepping by default is follow the same time increments. And then the color settings. And then you can emphasize certain experiments and some other settings here. We're just going to click uh, Save here and use the default values. So that's our first uh, file. We can do the same thing with the other file. I'm going to go to Edit Data. I'm going to, it's going to clear the table. I'm going to read in. I can right click here to read in another file, the second file. And here are the three columns. I'm going to set column name, time engineering strain, engineering stress. So I can set them all three at once, create a load case. In this case, all the settings we know are OK. So it's going to save that here. So these are our two experimental data files. And the next thing I'll do is I will save this file. It's a good idea to save your uh, simulation file sometimes. So just press Control S to save it. And the next thing I'll do is to think a little bit about this. When we calibrate the material model, we may want to have information about the bulk modulus, the Poisson's ratio of the material. And these are uniaxial tension tests, so they don't have that information. So I'm going to add another load case here by clicking on the plus sign. I'm going to add a Poisson's ratio type experiment. And you see from this drop-down menu, there are many different kinds of experimental tests that M calibration understands. I'm going to say that the Poisson's ratio in this case for this material is 0 0.4. By providing this information, the software can then make sure that the material model that you calibrate has the Poisson's ratio that you like. All right, so here's my experimental data. Um, before we move on to material models, I, I want to rename these because they don't have good names. And the legend here says tension data 1, tension data 2. I can just have the software rename them based on what type of data it is by clicking Rename. It says uniaxial tension, and it specifies the strain rate. I'm also going to change the font size here a little bit. It's a little bit too big for my liking, so I'm reducing that a bit. Now, let's select the material models. I click on material models, set material model. And then this dialog box allows you to select uh, many different types of material models here. And for the demonstration today, I'm going to use the PolyUMOD 3 network model. I select it here. The recommended material models that, that, that I typically recommend are in yellow, but this is one of them. And then there are some other settings for this material model that you may want to take a look at, but most of the time you don't have to. So here are the material model parameters for the PolyUMOD 3 network model. 
Now, the software likes you to specify the experimental data before you specify the material model because when you select the material model, it looks, the software looks at the data that's available and then presets initial guesses of these parameters based on the data that's available. In this case, we had specified that we have an information about the Poisson's ratio, for example, and the software then sets the bulk modulus kappa to be a specific value and it also uh, uh, sets it to be an optimized parameter. So any parameter here in this table, which has a checkbox here, if this is checked, it means that the software will search for that parameter. Some of these parameters are not searched for, and that is because of whatever uh, the data is available, perhaps. Perhaps there wasn't enough information there to select it, or maybe it's, um, it's not important in most cases to search for. So most of the time, you don't need to select or deselect which parameters to search for. The software will do it for you, but you can always override that if you like. The number that's next to the checkbox indicates if uh, if two parameters are unknown but the same. So if you set two parameters with the same number next to the checkbox, that means that they are unknown but they have to have the same number. So you can tie two parameters to be the same in that way. You can also see that each parameter has a default value and then lower and upper bounds. You can check, change these values if you like. Most of the time you don't have to. These are uh, thought out in, in ahead of time, so you don't need to worry about it most of the times, but that's something you can change if you like. So this is our material model. Now, if we switch over to the Run Calibration tab here, I can click Run Once. If I click Run Once, what will happen is that the software will take these uh, material parameters in this specified material model and evaluate what the stress strain predictions would be for these uh, tests. And then it plots that in dashed lines here. I'm going to reduce this font even a little bit more so we can see even better. We see that the, the yield stress, in this case, the dashed predicted yield stress values are a little too high, but we haven't actually told the software to, to optimize these parameters yet. All we have here is the initial guess uh, that it was generated, and it looks reasonably good for what we're trying to do. So what I will do next is to actually run the calibration. So we go to Run Calibration uh, and click Run Calibration. There are many different optimization methods you can use here. You can tell it to stop after a given time or so. For demonstration purposes, I often use the quick automatic method. For real problems, I often use the extensive automatic method. That will switch up certain algorithms for the calibration itself, and that's typically good enough. But I will use, in this case, the quick automatic one. I click OK. And what's going on now is that the M calibration is automatically manipulating these uh, values for these parameters in order to better match the experimental data. The error currently is 14.2% uh, uh, between the experimental and the predicted values. And that's also plotted down at this graph here. This is initially, the error was about 25%. And uh, now it's uh, slightly less than 10%. And uh, it has uh, tried to evaluate this or perform this calibration now for about 30 seconds. And uh, it has used about 170 guesses of parameters as it's working through this. And you see that it's starting to look pretty good. If we wait longer, it typically the, the fit will get better. If the material model is a suitable material model for uh, the material that you're interested in. In this case, the three network model is, is a good viscoplastic material model. It's a nonlinear viscoplastic material model and tends to be pretty accurate for these types of uh, materials. This is a stiff uh, rubber material. And so here, here is the predictions. We can let it run a little longer, but just for saving time here, I'm going to stop this. The error is down to about 4%. And now, when you work with material models, it's often very useful to, to learn a little bit more about these parameters and what they do and things like that. There are many features of M calibration that allow you to, to understand this better. One of them is a parametric study. So that's something you could do at this point. I'm not going to do it in this demonstration. Uh, instead, what I want to show is kind of the final step that's often uh, what's necessary, and that's to export your material model that you have calibrated to some finite element format so you can use it in your real finite element simulation. So to do that, you just click on e material model, export, and here are the different formats you can use. Uh, I will export this to ANSYS APDL format, um, but you can see some of the other supported formats. I click Save. I'm going to save it to this directory. And here is the file that we just generated. 
So these are APTL commands, TB user, this is uh, the, the uh, tree network model that comes with the polymod library. Here are the parameters, and here is the, the state variables. So this is uh, how, how you would use this in real life. And if, uh, it really is way more you can talk about here, but you don't need to worry about that in this introduction. And right now, is the goal is just to give you a quick overview of how this software works.